C.S. Joseph, and watch out for your golden pair. Uh, I immediately had to go live after reading James Lee's uh, comment that he posted on the uh, Facebook group just now, and I found it very fascinating. A lot of people think, you know, golden pairs are like the best, highest compatible relationships, and yeah, they are. They have the highest highs and lowest lows, and he was commenting about how someone was basically glorifying the golden pair relationship as the absolute best uh, relationship for somebody, which in my opinion, kind of feeds into the whole soulmate myth type of a thing. And it's kind of interesting how that works. Uh, so uh, I, I found it very fascinating because he was kind of calling them out and just being like, OK, I'll hold hold the phone here. Like you do realize that, you know, if you watch season 21, which is the social engineering lecture series, if you watch that you kind of realize that the golden pair can actually be a lot more dangerous than you realize because, you know, by virtue of social engineering somebody, you effectively are emulating their golden pair in an effort to take advantage of them. So I'm like, uh, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. And I think that really demonstrates to people when it comes to golden pair relationships specifically, like, you know, it really demonstrates to people like, okay, yeah, they're great, but watch out. Really spend time watching out. Because, like, here's something that, you know, a lot of people don't really understand about the golden pair or haven't even uh, realized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hostick. Uh, thank you very much, good sir. Uh, I wonder uh, when you first subscribed. Hey guys, I'm going to go like live randomly doing these episodes. So like hit the notification bell just so you guys know, because you never know when it's going to happen. Um, so um, anyway, one thing that people don't realize is that like when you look at the golden pair, you have to notice something about the four sides of the mind involving the golden pair. And uh, they are the same. The same as you. You have the same four kinds of people in your head that they have in their head talking to them. And one of the main issues is that there's a serious lack of variety uh, in your guys' relationship because of that. You don't have that problem with a silver pair. The silver pair is great, and you're a little bit slightly more enabled than in a golden pair. A golden pair is not really going to enable you. And because you have all of the same sides of the mind in a golden pair uh, relationship, you also can have a face-to-face -face relationship, but you can also have that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relationship. And it really helps you get through life, get through tasks. And it can be an amazing experience. But they also know how to screw you over in like the worst possible ways, and they will. For example, my golden pair, the INTJ, and I'm going to be sharing uh, both sides of this just a little bit, just to kind of give you an idea. And we might explore, you know, silver pair and bronze pair and a little bit of pedagogy, uh, you know, within this particular episode. But we're going to like look at, you know, my experience. I just did, you know, how to master your demon SI episode. So all you INTJs out there and you're not like a journeyman member, you probably should become a journeyman member so you can understand that, that content. But here's a little snippet out from that episode. SI demon has this problem where they have self-neglect. They don't take care of themselves. And when an SI demon, especially an SI demon woman, but it's, it's true for men too, but, you know, an SI demon woman, if they don't take care of herself, she get ugly. She ugly. Let's be honest. She ain't sleeping. She ugly. All them bags under her eyes, you know what I'm saying? Dark, dark circles, you know what I'm saying? It ain't attractive. And I'm just using a very, I guess, I mean, you could say shallow example here. But introverted sensing demon is self-neglect, not take care of herself, never getting any sleep, for example. Her hair starts falling out. She opens up her blood-brain barrier, gut floor gets in her brain, she ends up developing multiple sclerosis or uh, potentially other really bad symptoms that could be really bad 
And, you know, she ends up becoming a medical burden, whatever. But the point is, is that any man, especially an SI inferior, especially their golden parent ENTP, who would have self-respect, would abandon her. Well, when that happens, she blames him for abandoning and then uses her ISFJ demon because she's blamed him to punish him and punishes him with revenge. She becomes vengeful, punishes him with vengeance, even though it was actually her fault to begin with because she did not have the self-respect to stop the self-neglect, okay? So this is an example of a golden pair relationship gone wrong. And trust me, folks, I've been there. I've lived that. Something INFJs need to figure out too, because they'll do that, right? Gotta watch out. Better watch out. So the golden pair, it's highest highs and it's the lowest lows. And the reason why it's the lowest lows is because they're quartet. A quartet is basically the four sides of your mind. It's not your quadra. Quadra is all the four types that share the same functions as you, but your quartet basically is the four sides of the mind that you have in your head compared to other people. If you're in a relationship with a silver pair, well, they have completely, so like for me, it's the ENTJ, right? So the ENTJ, you know, has ISFP, INTP, ESFJ in their head. It's completely different four types. It's a whole new level or amount of cognition that's available to me as an ENTP for just, you know, using myself as an example here. And that's fantastic. It's really, it's really nice to have that variety. And there's a lot more respect. And that's why I call the silver pair the respect relationship because they show a lot of respect. Now, Chris Taylor recently has been talking about this concept he calls soft blocking, and he'll be explaining more of it later. I don't want to spoil too much of it, but basically the idea is when you're having relationships with people or interactions with people, they will put you into different sides of your mind more often than the others, basically. And, you know, when, and, you know, according to him, like silver pairs will put you more into your subconscious. So a silver pair can like have like this very high euphoric happiness driven approach. And then as a result, and I, and I hope I'm explaining this correctly, um, but, um, uh, and, you know, and that's great, but it, and it still has a lot of respect, but it carries a little risk of enabling. And there can be a little bit of enabling, but not much. The golden pair is not going to enable you. The golden pair understands all of your tricks. And because due to that lack of enablement, you're effectively being exposed consistently. And that's really necessary for growth. Again, highest highs, lowest lows. And again, as James Lee pointed out, the fact that you have to emulate someone's golden pair in order to social engineer or to effectively ego hack them, basically, in order to do that, to manipulate them, to get something that you want or get something that they want, but don't even know they want it, etc. You know, like convincing an ISTP to go to the hospital for once when they need to. That would be an example. But either way, either way, uh, you still have to emulate the golden pair for that reason. It's just It just completely unlocks their soul. But silver pair is not a complete total unlock. So everyone's able to be like a master of their castle, etc. No one's going to be challenging them for the throne. You know, Like, for example, if I was at the 9TJ, I may fancy myself a really good cook, but they may just randomly decide to cook themselves because they don't like what I'm cooking. Whereas in a silver pair, they're going to show a little bit more respect and maybe kind of do a workaround approach. Bronze pair, however, gosh, it's so enabling. It's completely enabling of people. And it's, it's, it actually has, it carries a much larger risk of becoming an unhealthy relationship because of the enabling, right? And that can also be an issue. But yeah, I mean, guys, this is just, you know, another example why, you know, going back to the SI demon, you know, example I, I i did the how to master your demon series and the final episode of that season is coming out this month so if you guys want to get on that go to csjoseph.life forward slash members become a paid member 
And pretty soon I'm going to be doing a bunch of live streams with guests where paid members can join me on any live stream that they want to discuss whatever topic it is that I'm going to be live streaming from. That's going to be pretty cool. So I also got episode seven of season 31 coming out this week, which is going to be crazy. I just finished writing the outline for it. It'll probably be the most controversial episode I ever do in the history of uh, the channel. And yeah, it may cause a lot of people to leave, but good riddance because, you know, I don't want fair weathered subscribers. I want real people who are really willing to stick around and hear the truth and do the work so we can make the world a better place and solve this problem of fatherlessness. Bring back the mature masculine so that we can actually have our lives and our happiness back instead of you know finding ourselves crawling on the floor picking up dollar bills off the ground after you know stripping all evening for example so yeah it's probably a, a much better way to live life not doing that let's be straight so but you know because fathers keep men out of jail and uh, women off of stripper poles I mean, that's what they're for, after all. So, yeah, guys, like, just understand, like, you know, the the golden pair is not a, a gravy train. If you want a gravy train relationship, go for the bronze pair. But the enablement can actually lead to some huge problems between the two types, and you just want to watch out for that. It's like having a an echo chamber of life, basically. Not as much challenge. If you want to make the friction worth it, Get a silver pair. Get a pedagogue. I, I, this is why I say pedagogue is probably the best kind of relationship. And if you think about it, a lot of places on the MBTI blogosphere on the internet would actually claim that the true golden pair is basically the pedagogue relationship, which it's not, but I could see where they're coming from. You have highest sexual compatibility. They have really low emotional compatibility. So you have the opportunity to have great sex, but at the same time, you aren't enabling each other and it forces growth. You know, being, if you're a TI user in a relationship with another TI user, you end up sharpening each other. It leads to conflict, many, many fights, but you both are stronger for it afterwards. Same with FI users, competing for spotlight, competing for status, etc., competing for who gets to feel good today versus who gets to feel bad today, etc. It makes them sharper, makes them more mature, makes them into better people. Isn't that what sexual relationships should actually be about? Or do we just want some hedonistic gravy train? You know, go for the bronze pair if you want that. But it may not last very long. And then, of course, there's a superego relationship where it's like max challenge, max hard mode. You got some compatibility but both persons are just going to see the other person as childish. And they get very judgmental. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the greatest thing in the world due to how judgmental you know, those two people can be within that relationship. You know, and I would know because that was my first marriage. I was in a super ego relationship for my first marriage. So... It can be a thing. <clears throat> but yeah, like the pedagogue ultimately is probably the best. But, you know, that assumes that the man and woman involved in the relationship, like the woman is actually feminine and uh, actually has humility and uh, is willing to put tribe above self. You know, it also assumes that the man is masculine and uh, the man is putting self above tribe etc. So it's nothing to do with whether or not, you know, naturally it's compatible enough, but let's be straight. You know, you got to have your nurture pieces in there too, in order to make a relationship uh, work out pretty well. And if you're not willing to do that, well, that's on you. I mean, if you're not willing to submit to the mature feminine, well, that's on you. If not willing to submit to the mature masculine. Well, that's on you. It's kind of a problem. So don't forget, guys, as often as these pairings are for sexual relationships, 
they're pretty good for nature, but you also got to make sure you keep a track of nurture. There's another issue with nurture. One final point. You know, in a relationship, you need someone who's shadow focused to be with someone who's subconscious focused. So the shadow focused person can basically become a little happier uh, with the subconscious focused person around. And the subconscious focused person can become a little wiser with the shadow focused person around. Talking about focus matters, folks. It really matters. That matters. Compatibility matters, you know, with the different pairings, etc. There's a lot of other pairings. You know, my pairing with Railgun, like, we have, like, super ego-based sexual compatibility. Um, and then we have, like, zero emotional compatibility whatsoever. But it keeps us sharp. keeps us very sharp. And it's like I'm in a pedagogue relationship with her subconscious and vice versa. And we've been able to grow and become better people as a result. Like, for example, she gave birth. Most women who give who get pregnant and give birth, they don't lose their pregnancy weight. They keep it on them for another 20 years. For her, for example, you know, it's now five months after she's given birth. She, um, when I first met her, she was like 134 to 30 to 140 pounds in that range, basically, when I first met her. And then she was about 168, 170-ish at the time of giving birth to our son. And now she's 120 pounds and is smoking, right? Well, I mean, welcome to the miracles of breastfeeding. If you know how to count your calories properly and manage breastfeeding at the same time, a woman has full control over uh, her body and her aesthetic while breastfeeding. It's pretty dope. So anyway, folks. So yeah, just understand that, you know, the golden pair may not be all that it's cracked up to be. When we really say it's the highest highs and it's low as lows, it's true. And I want to thank James Lee. Shout out to James Lee for his little example that he had in the Facebook group. Uh, Pretty dope and uh, definitely true. Just by virtue of emulating the golden pair in a social engineering or ego hacking situation, that alone is proof that, you know, the golden pair is highest highs and lowest lows and should not necessarily be put on a pedestal. So keep that in mind, folks. I get a lot of you are like super into trying to be with your golden pair and that's fine. You know, go for it, go for what you want. But the reality of the situation is that may not actually be what you need, right? If you're, if you've been heavily abused in your life, maybe the gravy train of a bronze pair is everything you actually need. I want you folks to be open to considering what you might need and not necessarily what you want when it comes to relationship pairings. It's really, really important because otherwise you're going to find yourself ruining your life and ruining someone else's life at, at the same time within that process. So keep that in mind. Understand that there are risks and make sure you do your homework properly before choosing a mate. Or you could just, you know, do as I do and love them anyway. Because if I know the psychology well enough, I could potentially be in a relationship with any person, literally any person. And I could meet their needs, maybe meet their wants, do both. And I could teach them how to do the same for myself, which guess what? That's what I do in my marriage because it's given us a conduit with which we can communicate and as a result, we are able to grow and become so much more than we ever have before. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Hope you found this episode useful, helpful, educational, enlightening. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a like, please. Notification bell, all those things that YouTubers usually say. Please do those things and support the channel. You really use the support nowadays. It's very, very important. So anyway, folks, with that being said, I'll see you guys. Maybe tonight again. Who knows? But probably tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Cutting Edge uh, podcast episode tomorrow night from members. Check it out. Later.